Welcome, everybody. Thanks for joining. Um, I'm Anja from Strudel Media Live, and uh, this talk is a collaboration of New York City Photo Community and Strudel Media Live, and I'm very excited to be here today with James Prochnik. And um, this will actually be his third talk where he is giving uh, the history uh, of photography on, on a New York City theme. Um, one in the past was the New York City subway, another one was New York City parks, and tonight he will give a short history of New York City beach photography. So I'm very excited about that. I hope he will, I hope this will get us into a summer mood and summer mode. Um, if you have any questions, please put them in the chat. Uh, at the end, we will also do a Q&A where you can just unmute and ask questions. And the talk will last uh, a little over one hour. Um, James, I want to welcome you. Uh, I'm so excited you're doing this talk today on New York City beach photography. So I will hand it over to you okay. and um, enjoy. Thank you so much, Anya. And uh, thank you to Strudel Media for co-presenting and co-piloting this talk. I really appreciate it. And, and Anya, by the way, is in Europe now. so. She's making an extra sacrifice uh, to put this talk on. So extra thanks for that. So uh, without further ado, I'm going to go ahead to, and share my screen because there is a, a, a lot to see, a lot of great beach photography to see. So does everyone see? Yes. OK, good. So yeah, as Anya mentioned, this talk is a brief history of NYC beach photography. Uh, putting it together, I actually think maybe a better title might have been a brief or an eccentric survey of NYC beach photography, because NYC beaches are are just photographed a lot. So I know I'm going to be uh, missing some people uh, that could have been included here. So if if you know of anyone for a, a, another talk I give in the future, let me know of some other great beach photographers if if I've missed any of your favorites. Uh, let me uh, start out here with a little bit of a, a prayer from Walt Whitman. He says, as to me, I know of nothing else but miracles, whether I walk the streets of Manhattan or dart my sight over the roofs of houses toward the sky or wade with naked feet along the beach just in the edge of the water. That's from his poem, Miracles from, from Leaves of Grass. And yeah, I think... Uh, well, Whitman's right to, to include the beach in his list of miracles in that poem. When I uh, graduated from college, I, I, I was a communications major. I didn't go to school for photography. Uh, and when I was preparing for this talk, I looked back at some of my earliest photography. And I really like when I first graduated and moved to New York City, I, I I was very into photography and I did some stock photography and I took a darkroom course and it's interesting that like one of the few pictures I was able to find from from those early days of me engaging with photography was one at Coney Island this this picture from the 90s and and then I kind of took up another career still in the arts and really didn't return to photography in a very serious way till around 2013 about 10 years ago and that's when it kind of overtook my life and I went back to the beach. But I do think it's interesting that Coney Island was a was an early subject for me. Because actually, as we'll see, it's it's a subject where a lot of photographers got their start get their start. Um, one of the first pictures that I found when I was was looking into this subject was this Puck magazine, uh, which was uh, Puck Magazine was kind of a satirical magazine of the time. And this is an issue from 1891, where they had a cover that said the peeping toms of the camera. And this was, I think, set on Coney Island. They were a New York magazine. So that's the kind of the earliest view people had of photography and, and the beaches of New York is, is the idea of all these men with their box cameras hiding out to photograph the beautiful woman there in her skimpy bathing suit. But uh, yeah, beaches, it's 
it's easy to see in a way why beaches just in general are a good topic for photography because you know photography is a medium where we always you know it's a it's a medium that that collects the surfaces of things that's what that's what we get when we make a picture we see a surface of the world replicated so when you go to the beach though you're already and 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 even though it's all surfaces we kind of want to get more inside you know we're always looking to find interiority and to find like meaning beyond surfaces. So at the beach, it's interesting because yeah, you know, people's clothes come off at the beach. So already you're taking a layer off of people. So the surfaces are more revealing. And uh, this photo is is kind of the first photo that seemed sort of like a modern photo of, of one of the beaches of New York. It's by Morris Engel. And uh, he was a photographer who who uh, was actually one of the co-founders of Magnum eventually. And he had done some great work uh, as a combat photography in World War II. And, and, and eventually, actually, I think he, he marries Ruth Orkin. So maybe his, uh, his star in the photo um, firmament is a little dimmed because she became, I think, a better known photographer and he became a, a filmmaker. But yeah, this is a this shows the intimacy that we see on a beach, and we'll see this theme repeated through several photographers. This is uh, one of the most iconic photos done on Coney Island. This is Lizette Modell, uh, who photographed this wonderful woman, and and yeah, you know, it's it's not only do we have our our clothes off, but it's all kinds of different bodies. And, you know, that's, that's a message that, you know, is sort of commonplace now, like, what is your beach body? It's the body that you have at the beach, you know, that is a beach body, whatever your body looks like. And, and Lizette Modell, like captured this woman, and she's Yeah, she's taking up space in such like a just vibrant, alive uh, way that it just, I think, I think it just appeals to everyone. Uh, Lizette Modell also uh, was a teacher to many other photographers like Deanne Arbus, uh, Rosette, or Rosalind Fox Solomon, amongst others. This is another photo by her uh, of, of the same woman, I believe. And it's interesting to me, too, just how one, this one became so uh, iconic, and this one which is almost more like a traditional kind of male gaze kind of view of the body just uh, is, is less well known, but I thought interesting to show. So this is what the beach looked like in 1940, Coney Island specifically. And, and in a caption that Ouija wrote about this picture, he said that there was a million people on the beach and that wasn't uncommon for a Sunday. So that's interesting too, like the beaches of New York, like when they, when they brought the subway out there, it really was a way for a lot of the people who are living in kind of the uh, just hot streets of New York, you know, unair conditioned houses to to take a nickel subway ride and come out to the beach and get some fresh air. So you would have these just incredible crowds like this, which we don't see anymore. Also, as as people just were able to travel more generally, they went to further away beaches too. So those are some kind of individual pictures. The first real person who I, I know that did like a serious full body of work on Coney Island was Harold Feingold. And, and he was actually born on Coney Island. And when he was 16, he started making pictures there. So I think, you know, that's one of the reasons his pictures are so great, but it, yeah, it, it shows how, if you're really, you know, if you're familiar with a place, like he was familiar with Coney Island, um, that it could, it could really, uh, you could just describe it better than other people. But uh, yeah, I love this picture. This is, you know, not, he was born in 1931. This is 1947. So he was 16 years old when he took this picture. And he's like looking through this old uh, milk, milk delivery truck, it looks like. And we, we do see that parachute jump in the distance through the through the open door of it. So I like that, that he's 
you know, I think that's a photo that a local would make. He's stepping back. He's not just totally on the beach. He's looking, he's looking at Coney Island from a distance because he knows the area. And he was just an incredibly inventive photographer. And we see that again and again. Like in a way you could you could really do just a whole talk just on on Harold Feingold's work because it was so inventive and so great. Uh, yeah, like this 1946 of so this, he, I guess he was only 15 because he was born in 1931. Uh, but yeah, what a, what a marvelous photo. And at night too, just uh, amazing. And, and he kind of became, you know, what we would call a street photographer. And you see some of that too in his, in his coverage of Coney Island, which he continued to photograph throughout his whole life. Although he did do a lot of other work in a lot of other places, Coney Island was, was near and dear to his heart. And here we see something again, we're gonna see a lot, which is, you know, young men finding, finding themselves, you know, that, that transitional point between young manhood and, and adulthood that often plays out on the beach and uh, young courtship here. I like these really wide low angles too. And yeah, he was very inventive with that. Like this low angle of the, of the parachute jump, I think is amazing. Like to this day, I don't really see people do this angle of the parachute jump. And again, to his inventiveness, he he could see the benches that line the Coney Island beaches as the like the score. So he's made kind of a musical, like sheet music montage, as he calls it, of people walking and and making a score of music, which uh, we see in kind of later street photographers like Elizabeth Bick picks this idea up a little bit. But yeah, he could he he saw musicality in the energy of the place. I love, I love like the rhythm and, and gestures of these kids running into the water. We see that again here. So just like, yeah, what, you know, also he, there's a wonderful website where you can look at his photos, a ton more photos, and they're almost all great. He was really excellent. We see even that musicality and, and rhythm here in this photo. And maybe a little comment too on uh, just kind of the diversity of Coney Island. Love this photo. So this is, he did a lot of work in color later on. This is in 1980. So he's, you know, getting a little older himself, almost almost 50, I guess, here. And and I think Coney Island too, like it was already kind of becoming a rougher place in the 70s, but I think the 80s were kind of a tough time, a lonelier time. And so it's interesting to see how just the energy and vibrancy and aliveness that he celebrates in those earlier pictures turns to a much moodier uh, feel in some of these later color images. So that's all for Harold Feingold. I, I wanted to show a couple pictures of the parachute jump because it is such an iconic part of Coney Island. So this is by Margaret Bork White, the famous Life magazine photographer and photojournalist. Uh, a great view of that of that parachute jump. And then this is what it actually looked like as a ride. So if you've ever wondered, like, what was the parachute jump? This is what it was. You would, you would be raised up to the top, and then they'd slow, slowly lower you down over, I think, one or two minutes. So that's just what that ride looked like back in its day. I think it's a, a historically preserved place now, so it will always kind of be an icon of Coney Island. So the... We're going to just look at different ways that people approach it. I kind of love these photos by Leon Levenstein. He was a photographer I wasn't too familiar with until I started researching this. But I love his his kind of detailed, really close up looks of the beach. I think this is a like a beautiful, like beautifully tender moment. Maybe maybe the most tender moment of 
of all of the photographs that I'll show, even though we do see that kind of intimacy and tenderness. And even to see that on a beach, I think that's what happens. People just kind of let themselves go and let themselves just be themselves in a much more natural way on the beach. And he was also just interested in just the, the great expanses of flesh. He actually worked more, by the way, as a graphic designer than as a photographer. So perhaps that's part of why we see these images that focus in on details like this, the, the fleshiness of bodies. Some photographers like Dean Arbus, they just kind of, you know, didn't make the beach or Coney Island really like didn't make bodies of work around it. They just kind of came out there, did their did their thing <laughs> and left. So yeah, there's not too much work that I could find of Dean Arbus at Coney Island, but this one is pretty iconic. It's it's a you know definitely a Dean Arbus photo uh, with this person wearing wearing their black socks and kind of dress shoes and their their work hat and looking like they might be just you know walking on Fifth Avenue except except there they are at Coney Island. This, by the way, is the same kind of outfit I tend to wear there, so I appreciate it for that. Um, but, you know, I think the charms of the place also seduced even people like Dean Arbus. So this is one other photo. It is on a, a foggy day, it looks like. So maybe that's the, the Dean quality. But I think just, you know, the charm and, and life of people even, even got her, you know. So I, I love this photo of the, you know, the proud mother and father and the daughter kind of giving a pose for Dean. Robert Frank, like Dean Arbus, didn't make a ton of work there, but there's a couple of photos, kind of the, the same foggy day as Dean Arbus's last photo. And then this photo at night on July 4th, where almost it's it's just so dark. It's such a dark photo, and the and the sand kind of looks almost like a lunar surface here. So uh, maybe because he was Swiss, Coney Island just seemed like a completely alien place to him in some ways. Uh, but it it's touching too. Bruce Davidson, who became a Magnum photographer, I, I think I, I think his is a more more pleasant picture of the the Fourth of July on the beach. And uh, they always have fireworks, and that's what people are looking at here. But Bruce Davidson, when he was just 25, he made a body of work called Brooklyn Gang. And while, while the subject of that was a Brooklyn gang, many of the iconic pictures from that body of work were made on, on Coney Island. And they're just beautifully composed. Uh, this one, I can see Bruce Weber looking at this photo and kind of trying to imitate uh, just the just the beauty of it and intimacy, the way they're clasping hands and her eyes are closed and he's smoking. It's just a, kind of an incredible picture. This photo too is one of the iconic photos in that series of the Brooklyn Gang, and I. Here it seems to me like uh, you know two of the two of the gang members are competing to see who's the more alpha member of the gang, and it looks like the guy on the left maybe is uh, asserting his dominance here. Speaking of Bruce Weber, just throwing this one in here. It's really he didn't do a lot on on New York City beaches, as far as I know, but. Uh, I did find this picture of Leonardo DiCaprio that he had made. And I, I wonder if there's something in that, uh, in the body language of the gang member that he's sort of playing on in this picture of Leonardo, who, who looks much less alpha than his gang member from back in the, in the uh, when was that? In the late 50s, 1959. So we've talked. We've mentioned Bruce Weber, uh, Bruce Davidson. So this is the Bruce part of the talk. Bruce Gilden. He also uh, kind of 
went to Coney Island. He said a year after he got his first camera, he first went to Coney Island in 1969. And he's immediately, you know, taking kind of a Bruce Gilden kind of picture, you know, fascinated by see, you know, this woman in the cage, see her change from beauty to beast. Uh, it kind of becomes a theme of all his work, but he ends up doing a lot of work on Coney Island over the years. And I think he's fascinated by bodies and the passage, you know, what happens to bodies as they pass through time. He, he once said a lot of his photos kind of are inspired by just how he felt about his mother and father uh, in terms of the tough guys and the women uh, who sometimes have a hard life. And I, I think that makes sense in, uh, when you look at his work to understand that psychology. He was fascinated, you know, he, he loves strong contrasts. So here, the contrast of, of the skinny older guy and the bodybuilder to the right. Although I did read that this, you know, a lot of his work was kind of classic candid street photography, um, not asking permission or anything. But this, I think he did ask the bodybuilder to stand next to the uh, older gentleman. So he just, yeah, he just loves those contrasts in, in bodies and form. The early version of Beats headphones in this uh, picture, early, early headphone technology. I, in many, many of my students in Strudel Media class might know that I often say don't take pictures of people from behind because it kind of closes the conversation, but I think this is a pretty successful version of a photo from behind. Even the way that the man closer to us, the way his shadow, uh, the, the bathing suit or, or the, I don't even know what it is, forms like an outfit, it looks like, of the, of the further guy. A woman sunning herself. I don't think people would, would do this these days with uh, the dangers of the sun more well known. Elliot Erwitt, another, you know, very famous photographer who just kind of pops in, makes this one Coney Island picture I could find and then pops out to make the rest of his work all around the world, but uh, very much an Elliot Erwitt picture. So this is a little bit outside of New York City beaches. This is Jones Beach, which is on Long Island, um, but it's a beach familiar to many New Yorkers and many New Yorkers go there for concerts and also to the beach. It's one of the largest beaches in the area. And Joseph Zabo was a high school teacher uh, in the Long Island area. And he made a great many bodies of work, several books actually, one called Jones Beach where he, he's dealing with kind of youth who are growing up and imitating adults and becoming adults. And that's his point of interest as a photographer. And his work was influential. Like Bruce Weber, I think, even wrote an introduction to one of his books. And Sofia Coppola, the film director, says that she was influenced by the look of his pictures. So we see sort of a Bruce Gilden thing here in terms of the strong contrasts. Also just the way beaches are nice, you know, it's, it's places we, yeah, where all kinds of people get together and all ages of people from the very old to the very young. So yeah, this, this was, this picture kind of embodies sort of that theme of Joseph Zabo of, of kids wanting to become adults and transitioning into adults. This is called Priscilla, one of his earlier pictures. And this picture actually, you know, entered the uh, pop culture a little bit because the band Dinosaur Jr. used this photo on the cover of one of their albums called Green Mind.
in several photographers, there's the idea of a beach as kind of a theater that where people enact dramas or, or where dramas play out. And I think this is a good example of that, uh, where this young woman on the left uh, definitely looks a little bit left out as this couple's, you know, maybe one of her friends is making out with this guy and the way that that binocular uh, device is kind of looking at it, just sort of an amazing composition overall. So since we're on Long Island, we're going to stay on Long Island for a moment. This is some pictures from Meryl Meisler, who's a New York photographer and kind of famous for uh, showing like disco New York City in some of her books, like the disco era and, and basically uh, gay New York City, like, you know, what it was like at the clubs of the time. But she was also going, she was from Long Island too. So I think she was going back and forth from kind of her traditional Jewish family on Long Island and then into New York City where she lived and she'd party and live the nightlife. But these are some pictures she made in Fire Island, which was kind of a, a gay Mecca and beach off of Long Island. So a much kind of freer beach. You don't see this in, in uh, Coney Island or some of the Manhattan beaches, but quieter. Um, I think it was a safe space for the gay community, or it is even to this day. Uh, Ming Smith, who's a, you know now a very famous photographer. I hadn't known it, but she uh, had a series like one of her first series of work was also done on Coney Island. And I think it is where she was kind of finding her footing as a photographer. So I don't, you know, I don't, some of these appear in a recent, recent retrospective book that she has. And I don't think they're, you know, the greatest photos that she made, but I feel like she's a photographer finding her way in some of these you know, almost classic street photography shots like this. But yeah, basically kind of learning how to fly, I think is what Ming Smith is doing. And I think this one definitely is an amazing, great, great photo where maybe she's finally found how to, how to soar. Hazel Hankin is a photographer who uh, I featured in the NYC photo community newsletter, but I, I don't know how I came across her work. I think just through Instagram, but she did, uh, she's a longtime photography educator who's taught at City College of New York for a really long time. Um, I, she might've taught at ICP too, uh, but yeah, she had just like work from the seventies that definitely in my eye stands up to any of the other great you know, more well-known 70s photographers, but I think she is lesser known. So hopefully some of you will uh, friend her on Instagram if you don't know her. Because yeah, I think I think this is a terrific photo. Like again, just like I like that Harold Feingold picture where you're kind of looking at Coney Island from a distance and you see that iconic parachute ride. I like this coming in, you know, that that idea of you're coming from wherever you live in the city to Coney Island. So having that wider view on the place, I think is great. She, it seemed, was particularly kind of interested in the midway, the carnival games and carnival kind of rides that are just off the beach in Coney Island and captured them quite nicely. I like this concession stand where it almost looks like a science experiment <laughs> to me a little bit. And maybe some of the food is like a science experiment. Coney Island on a very rainy day. That's not something we see in a lot of beach photos. So uh, maybe that's, if, if any of this is inspiring you, I would encourage more people to make rainy, rainy pictures on the beach, because I think this is a great one.
nice use of blur on this ride where the, the flash freezes some of the excitement and, and we get the blur at the same time. It's a really great shot. And she did some great work in color too around the same time. So she was kind of on a hot roll in, in the 70s and I think early 80s too. And then she went off and like lived in Cuba for a while and did some other things. But yeah, I think, wow, I mean, this is a stunner, I think. Again, you know, Coney Island kind of hit, hitting hard times and you got a sense of that, but beautiful color in this. People used to rent bathing suits. That's not something you can do on Coney Island anymore, but I guess that was something you did back then. You could, uh, you could hire a bathing suit. Again, that midway, then the carnival games that she was so attracted to, but yeah, just in that gorgeous 1970s, maybe, you know, maybe Kodachrome color. Jamel Shabazz, another famous photographer of New York City, who as far as I know, just kind of pops into Jacob Reese Beach, like did not make a lot of beach photos as far as I know, but he has a huge archive. So who, who knows what's going to be out there in the future. But yeah, he, he comes to Jacob Reese Beach and, and makes a kind of a classic Jamel Shabazz picture, just like Deanne Arbus made a classic Deanne Arbus picture when she was on Coney Island. So now we're into Harvey Stein, and Harvey Stein just published a book last year called 50 Years at Coney Island. So like Harold Feingold, who, who spent 50 or more years documenting Coney Island, Coney Island has always been very near and dear to Harvey Stein's uh, photography work as well. So these pictures I'm going to show are from his recent book, Coney, you know, 50 Coney Island, 50 years. This picture actually reminds me of Deanne Arbus's earlier picture, kind of that that man and in, in that not, you know, it's, it, yeah, it has a very Arbus kind of quality to it. And just the way the person is dressed for the beach reminds me of her earlier picture. But he's, yeah, he's interested in all of the great pleasures of Coney Island, the action, the the male rituals and peacocking and flaunting and muscle building although i don't know what kind of sadomasochistic ritual this is but it looks painful the intimacy he's a great street photographer harvey stein so i love how we have just like a beautiful embrace by these two people but also these two hands coming in from either side of the frame he's also i think very consistent with his use of Maybe the same Leica through all of this work, although I think a few of the later ones might have been digital, but most of it, he's just using the same kind of Leica, which he knew really well, same wide angle. I mean, look at how well he fills the frame here. It's just, yeah, that, I mean, I think everyone responds to the incredible energy and just joy that you see on a beach like Coney Island. And it's very nicely packed into this frame here. He's also great with portraits on a, on a quieter beach like this. Or kind of that, that sense of transcendence almost that you get in this picture, just someone totally uh, losing themselves in, in the sun's rays. This is the cover of that book, by the way his 50 years of photography on Coney Island. I want to cover all the boroughs. Actually, I don't have any Manhattan uh, beach photos, but this is Staten Island. This is a beach called South Beach, and it's from a great photographer named Christine Ozinski, who didn't make South Beach the subject of her work. The subject was Staten Island, which she documents beautifully in the 1980s in these just really fabulous pictures. But she did make several pictures on the beach, on South Beach. And uh, yeah, just capturing that early. Uh, you know, the guy's wearing a 1984 Jackson's uh, concert t-shirt, so we know it's sometime after 1984.
making some muscles for the camera. So not too many on South Beach, but she's a great photographer and I encourage everyone to look her up. This is a photo by another person who was in the NYC photo community. It's uh, called Coney Island Venus by Nancy Oliveri. And she goes back, she's like an incredible photographer who's just someone who's just busy, just making work. Like I think she's published like seven books, which I believe she might've self-published them all. But yeah, you know, so Coney Island is part of her work. I don't know, I don't think she's done a, a full story just on Coney Island, but I think this is a pretty iconic picture of of a pregnant woman and the three men talking, kind of that that water as as the as the the source for us all. And she has a couple interesting pictures I plucked out, just these low angles where you're on the beach but looking up, which uh, I think are interesting. So up in the Bronx, we have Orchard Beach and Wayne Lawrence is the great photographer of Orchard Beach, although there is others. Uh, he made this incredible book, which is available on Amazon, even though it was published a few years ago called Orchard Beach, the Bronx Riviera. He's from St. Kitts in the West Indies, and but lives in Brooklyn and, and works out of New York. And he had gone to Coney Island at first because I think he lived in Bed Stuy when he first came to New York, but it just he didn't like it. He found it aggravating, and he heard about uh, Orchard Beach up in the Bronx that it had this really bad reputation, and he went up there and he made this incredible book of portraits of people. So it's sort of, I mean, it is about the beach. Everyone's wearing a bathing suit, or most people in in the pictures are wearing the bathing suit or in the ocean, but you don't really necessarily get a sense of of Orchard Beach as a beach, but you do get a sense of the people on this beach. And they're just, they're all stunning photos uh, where they we really do see a connection between the photographer and the portrait subject. They all seem quite comfortable to have their picture made with him. Yeah, and in terms like that idea I said earlier that beaches are interesting because, you know, photographer photography is about surfaces and we always want to get beyond the surface to learn more. Like these portraits, I really feel like they do that. Like we can I like I feel myself connecting to the people in these pictures. It's so tender. Love this picture, just incredible, incredible family picture. Uh, yeah, and he has a unique style too, a unique way of editing that's both kind of colorful and kind of desaturated at the same time, which I just think is really cool and beautiful. So, now back to Coney Island, uh, there's an Italian photographer, a fine art photographer named Massimo Vitale. And he's, he's kind of a beach lover, I guess, because that's sort of all of his work as a photographer is going around to the beaches all over the whole world and making these kind of, uh, yeah, bright, really uh, high, highlighted, high, high key photos, I guess you would call them. Um, where everything's kind of washed out, which I do think is accurate to the beach. Like when I'm on the beach, it is it is kind of a washed out high key place because the sun is so bright. And if the sand is at all towards a whitish color, it reflects all that light back on people. And he gets these kind of big vistas with a, I think an eight by 10 camera. This is Jones Beach, uh, that beach where Joseph Zabo, who we saw earlier, um was so this gives you a sense of that beach 
Now this is Queens. So we're in the Rockaway Beach, which is in Queens. And these are by Susanna Ray. She actually has a exhibition of this work that's opening at the Baxter Street Camera Club on June 28th. So you can see uh, more of these pictures. If you go by there, that's in New York City, the Baxter Street Camera Club. And, and she's done several bodies of work on the beach, uh, but we'll look at this one called Down for the Day. And she's interested in kind of the details and the patterns. I almost think of them as painterly pictures. I could imagine them as paintings. But here, kind of the wild patterns of the stuff we bring, but also kind of the chaos and mess. You know, it's not only this uh, interesting subject, an interesting beach umbrella pattern and the pattern of the blankets, but but then you have the Popeye's chicken uh, or, yeah, which uh, someone else might have taken that bag out of the picture, but but she leaves it in. And here again, kind of very almost like color fields. I can imagine them as painting, but sort of the chaos of all the stuff we bring to the beach. All the junk, our phone, our towels, sand guts and everything. So a very kind of modern, modern take on a beach. She also has uh, bodies, yeah, she has one on surfers in New York City and also how Rockaway was damaged in hurricanes. So uh, one on the environment and the beach as well. Um, these are pictures by Daniel Rampala. Also, like this is Reese, Reese Beach, which I think is also in Queens nearby the Rockaways. And uh, yeah, again, kind of, I feel like, yeah, these pictures kind of celebrate this beach as, as a quiet place. Uh, again, sort of like Fire Island, a safe place, safe space for uh, the queer community in New York City to enjoy the beach, which he documents quite beautifully and tenderly. Like here, that tenderness, I feel like it even extends. I mean, it reminds me of that poem by Walt Whitman where he talks about wading in the water and just kind of that tender stroking of the water too. So lovely. This is Erica Reed. Uh, she has a book that came out last year also called Beach Lovers. And she was also, she's, uh, from Canada, but loves New York City beaches and just seems like a beach person overall. Like she's a professional photographer. I think she does weddings, but in her personal projects, they are, she has like four or five projects all about the beaches in different ways, whether it's pollution on the beaches or like in this case, uh, the way that we use the public space of a beach to express these private intimacies. It's a very romantic view. It kind of recalls, you know, that very early 1938 photo like this one does to me by Morris Engel. And she captures nice details, like in addition to kind of the intimacy of these two beach lovers, there's a book that says the couple next door. So this book, I believe, I believe is still available. You could get on her website. These two people seem to be fusing into one. And this is kind of a, a good metaphor for relationships that the great unknown of a relationship where we have to hold on to each other to survive. Ruben Ratting, a street photographer in New York City, again, doesn't make Coney Island like his, his specific subject, but he, he did, you know, he's done a lot of work in Brighton Beach and Coney Island, um, filling the frame, which he loves to do, which is hard to do on the beach because beaches are very horizontal, but here in this uh, gazebo at, at uh, Coney Island, he's able to pack the frame in the way that he really loves to do. And, you know, kids with matching clothes and the stripes of their clothes and the stripes of the flag. His, his pictures have a lot of connections like that. 
the incredible, you know, again, transcendent freedom of Coney Island, someone leaping off the pier here. And fireworks on the beach. He likes ambiguity too, where we don't know necessarily exactly what we're looking at. Giselle Dupre is uh, the most colorful street photographer. Like her pictures, she uses a flash. Plus, you have you know the sun, a lot of sunny days, and yeah, her pictures just pop. And she does a ton of work at Coney Island. She should have a book. I don't think she does, but celebrating the diversity. And there's a lot of low angles like this where I feel like she's almost like a mermaid coming out of the water of, of uh, the Atlantic Ocean to make these pictures. If she is a mermaid, the kids seem to like her. Yeah, and she's doing a lot of this wandering along the shore. You know, some people stick to the boardwalk. I stick to the boardwalk. I'm not a beach beach person. I don't like the sand. But yeah, Giselle is always, or not always, but a lot like right along the shore, walking along the water. She also has a whole series of kids on this one particular ride called the Rocket Rider that are great with, again, those just incredible popping colors. Uh, Matthew Leifite is a great photographer, photo editor, you know, used to be a photo editor at Vice, works for New York Times now. And this is, is maybe his first book. It's called To Die Alive. And it's back to Fire Island. And, and here, you know, some of the pictures are on the beach, some aren't, some are just about the kind of the whole, uh, sort of gay scene, gay mecca of Fire Island are portrayed like the, the nightclubs, but it's kind of a, a place he describes as being about desire and, and death. And so his pictures are set up and staged. I think this is a part of um, Fire Island called the Meat Hook, with like a, a cruising area with kind of a mini forest in the dunes there. So yeah, that's a fascinating book uh, to die alive. Look that up. And yeah, that's, that's it. There's a lot more pictures I could show. I've left people out, but uh, I hope that this inspires you to go out and uh, make some great beach pictures of your own. If you're hair challenged like me, wear a, lot, wear a hat, wear lots of sunscreen, like on Coney Island, you'll get burned fast if you don't. So uh, please be safe about that. And don't be like those creeps in the, in the Puck magazine at the beginning. But I will stop sharing. And uh, if anyone has any questions or comments, I'd be happy to chat with you. Are there any questions? James, <clears throat> uh, you brought back a lot of memories to me. I'm uh, from New York City. I was born in the Bronx and oh, Orchard right. Beach was my beach. Oh, cool. Uh, not, it's not much of a beach, but it was my beach. <laughs> not like uh, the Rockaways, let's say, or even Jones Beach was my second. It actually became my first, but the first beach I went to is uh, Orchard Beach. Uh -huh. uh, the images are inspiring and, and uh, very on on the money, so to speak. You know, uh, for somebody like myself that can look back, oh yeah, I, I remember that stuff. Yeah, yeah. My dad grew up by uh, Coney Island, so our family's been beach orientated, you know, since, <laughs> in a strange way. But yeah, nice work and nice compilation. Thank you so much for doing this. Uh, you're welcome, and it's nice to hear. I, I have been to Orchard Beach myself, but only once, because I live in South Brooklyn, uh, kind of where uh, the Verrazano Bridge is that connects Brooklyn to Staten Island. So Orchard Beach is like a it's like a two-hour <laughs> ride or so yeah. for me. Um, so I don't spend too much time up there. Really, I'm so close to Coney Island that that's where I end up making all of my beach photos. Yeah. 
Well, you have a lot more to shoot there too, because not just the people on the beach and, and the water and stuff, they have a, a huge boardwalk with a bunch of amusement uh, things to, to get engage in and food stands and people doing all sorts of different things. It's a lot more limited in Orchard Beach. I, I get that. Yeah. Yeah. And, and Coney Island, of course, is borders Brighton Beach. And yeah, like Bruce Gilden described when he was making those photos I showed you of his, he would walk from Coney Island to Brighton Beach and back and he would do like two trips or two or three trips a day when he would he would get there like I think he would get to Coney Island at 1 p.m and do that circuit from Coney Island to Brighton Beach so yeah you also have Brighton Beach which is very Russian uh and Ukrainian area mm. but uh, yeah so that's a whole other kind of world up there to photograph which I didn't show you know I actually didn't find anyone who did like a body of work specifically on Brighton Beach mm. so for one of you all who is in New York, make Brighton Beach your place. You can own it. <laughs> James, thanks for introducing us to, uh, at least me, to photographers that I didn't know. Um, I recognized some pictures of Hazel Hankin, but I don't really know the work. And uh, Ming Smith also, uh, really very beautiful. Um, for those of you who uh, are not so familiar with Massimo Vitali's work, um, the high key beach pictures, when you see them in exhibition, he usually prints them and I cannot remember what the material is. It's like almost like very, very thick glass or plexi or something like that. That's what he prints on. And that, so they're very shiny, which I think is really so amazing for those uh, pictures. I think that's, what I remember that he prints onto that kind of material. Yeah, I think I've seen them once too, and that that is amazing. And again, I like why I wanted to show his pictures is just because I think he is getting something right about the beach, just how bright it is, you know, <laughs> it's the intense brightness, which you know a lot of photographers don't focus on, but um, he gets it, and that's his thing. And I also like your idea of uh, photographing a beach in the rain, you know, it's not something that I would think of. <laughs> Are there any other questions from anybody? Yeah, one more question. James, do you photograph beach work? Or beach I, I, or I do have, I, I have some, you know, I go to Coney Island a lot, so I do photograph it and on my website. Uh, it's actually in the archive section of my website. I have a, I have a few a few of my uh, Coney Island pictures there. But yeah, it's just, it's it's really close to where I live. And that, you know, so I, and it's just, I, it's it's just a place that, you know, kind of kind of like why I used to go to uh, the garden too, like Brooklyn Botanical Garden. It just immediately puts me in a good mood. There's so much to photograph there. That's why I think a lot of photographers did, did you know, kind of start out in Coney Island because there's so much to photograph there that it allows you to kind of find your footing as a photographer, which again is my sort of my theory about Ming Smith's uh, Coney Island series. But uh, yeah, so it's where I found my footing. It's when when I started photographing again seriously, it's uh, one of the places I returned to. What's hard is is being unique, you know, like photographing in the rain. Erica Reed, who made Beach Lovers, one of her other projects, she uses mirrors. She puts mirrors on the beach and makes some interesting photos. So maybe that's a, you know, it's interesting to see what people are doing to try to differentiate their work. But yeah, so check out her website too, Erica Reed. Any questions? No. How does she use mirrors? I don't understand. Like, does she then photograph into the mirror? Yeah, like she has a few great ones that are uh, just like a circular. I mean, she uses different mirrors. So some of her mm -hmm. mirrors are rectangular, some of them are broken. But I, I don't know. The ones that I respond to most strongly were like circular mirrors. So, like, for example, in one, you see the sunset reflecting in the mirror where the strongest colors are. So you see, like the blue sky of you know where it's past the sunset but then you see the sunset reflected in the mirror or you just see the sky reflected in the sand mm -hmm. um so different things like that but uh interesting yeah check them out they're good 
and and she has a a project about pollution on the beach too or plastics uh so yeah you know don't use single use plastics on the beach erica would tell you um because it's just going to end up in the ocean and be a disaster all right james thank you that was very inspiring and you don't like sand <laughs> not a big fan of sand <laughs> Like, yeah, I, I don't like getting water in it. I don't like swimming, but I do. Yeah, like I love to go to cardiac. Oh, I like hot funny. dogs. I like watching people watching. Uh, I like everything else about the beach, but. Uh, <laughs> That's but, funny. Yeah, but sand is not my thing, yeah. All right. Okay, well, um, Susie, I just want to see, did you want, did you have a question? No. No, thank you. Okay. Sorry, I just saw that you unmuted yourself. So I thought maybe you had a question. Mm -hmm. All right. Well, thank you everybody for uh, coming to James's talk. And um, yeah, I'm looking forward to seeing your beach pictures. So I hope you will all go out there and and, and take some pictures of sand and, and people. And have a good summer. I should say I didn't have a question, but yeah. uh, I enjoyed this. Uh, thank you. Thank you, Susie. Appreciate yeah, nice that. Nice to see you too. Someone did uh, mention the polar bear uh, thing in the chat. I just noticed. Um, what was? What did they say? Have you ever shot the polar bears every January first? Yeah. So that's another thing. On January first, New Year's Day, Coney Island Beach, there's a big kind of thing where hundreds of people come out and run into the freezing water. So that's a that's a fun event. If you can only be in New York uh, once during during the year, the polar bear plunge is a great thing. Although the polar bear club, I believe, meets every Sunday all throughout the winter and and does that plunge into the into the icy waters. Again, something I would hate, but uh, it's fun to photograph. And I wrecked my shoes the time that I went getting them all wet, but it's very, very enjoyable. Yeah, that's a great thing to do for sure. All right, well then, Thank you so much, everybody. Um, see you, you at the next talk. Okay. Thank you. Thanks, everyone. It was great. Nice to see you. Thank you. you. Thank you.